I once had it all. My palate was sated, nostrils stimulated, standing venerated. And one day, you took everything away but shame and pain. I'm still not sure what game you're playing, but I'm back. Taking what's mine. It made me think of your poem. Congratulations. Look, I'm aware of the rat's presence, okay? But nothing can be done about it. They've been on this island as long as anyone can remember. It's in our best interest to leave them be. Dear, congratulations once again on winning our competition. Let us repeat, your submission astonished us, and we are delighted to welcome you in our hermitage. Make yourself at home. The whole lighthouse is at your disposal. author of the winning essay will receive an opportunity to write the book on the subject in our lighthouse, accommodated especially for this purpose. Huh? Whole lighthouse is at your disposal. My ass! Hello? I received the word that you came to the lighthouse. You find everything to your liking. Well, that was fast. Yeah, I'm here. I'm very pleased to hear it. Now, are you writing? What? You must understand, Mrs. It is imperative that you start your work as soon as possible. I will remind you that you signed a contract. <laughs> now, it is very... Specific on the timeline. Uh, I would advise you abide by it. Goodbye. Now that was a conversation I was too sober for.
Our sources say 428 entries have been submitted to the agency. The entry that won was surprising, to say the least. It wasn't a scholar who won it, nor someone with proper education that would give him an understanding of life. It was a sensationalist, a horror writer, and... Might as well make some good use of the phone while I'm here. Hello? Hi, darling. I'm calling to let you know I'm here. Can you believe the agency already called to see if I was working? That's insane. Did you at least have time to settle in a bit? How's the lighthouse? Inspiring? Spooky? Haunted? All of these things. I was just looking around and it's certainly something. How are you? Do the meds work? Don't you worry about me, Mama. This is your time to do your work. To live your life. <sighs> well, maybe you're right. I should probably get to it then. Bye, son. Love you. Love you too, Mama. I know how you must feel. Lost. Alone. Hopeless. You probably deserve it. But even for you, there is still a way. A way to bring it all back. The one precious thing you ever truly desired. Finish it. you to cease bothering our pest control specialists, as well as refrain from sending us any more of your highly inappropriate letters. All of our employees that visited your house reported absolutely no signs of a rodent infestation of any kind, and as such, decided not to act further than a prophylactic spray. Please treat this letter as a final warning, or else... The next envelope you'll receive will be from our lawyers. I didn't touch the workshop, just like you asked. Although, I can't imagine the mess that's inside. Also, if you care so much for that room, maybe you should pay more attention to where you leave the keys. I brought them back to your office.
Some call him the new Caravaggio. Others compare him to Van Eyck. And one awestruck critic who wished to remain unnamed went as far as to invoke, quote, the spirit of the great Leonardo. Any way you slice it, the exhibition proved an immense success. Its distinct style has been praised for its unique combination of Renaissance influences and more progressive techniques. The artist himself attended the event in the company of his beautiful fiance, looking stunning in her black gown, revealed to us exclusively that the couple are indeed expected. Figured you'd be up all night, so I made you a little treat. You know, I bet even Rembrandt occasionally took time off from being brilliant and snored his head off like the rest of us common folk. I know! <gasps> In other words, get some sleep, you big dummy. I love you. So sick and tired of us talking through these notes. We live in the same house, for God's sake. Come talk to me when you're done, before you go to sleep. The long-awaited opening of the Galactic Department store turned into hell on Earth when the building's wiring burst into flames. While the majority of the visitors managed to reach the emergency exits in time, several unfortunate attendees were trapped in the back of the building, having no chance to escape the raging inferno. The exact number of casualties has not yet been determined, although it is estimated that at least a dozen people have been severely injured. The owner of the Galactic, Ronald Sheffield, has so far declined the comment on today's tragic events. Might not be a household name yet, but just give her time. The incredibly talented multi-instrumentalist gave an astounding performance last night winning over even the most ardent naysayers. Quote, She was simply astounding. I haven't seen such passion, energy, and skill in years. Stated famed pianist Daniel Richter. He was not alone in his praise. It seems even Anthony Giles, one of its harshest critics, has finally seen the light. Giles had previously made disparaging comments about the artist, stating, quote, There's more to performing music than enthusiasm in a pretty face. When asked if, after witnessing last night's performance, he regrets these words, Mr. Giles gave us a look that can only be described as a mixture of awe and embarrassment. Pressed for an answer, 
he simply said, yes. We caught up with the star. Let me ask you one simple question. Have you completely lost your goddamn mind? I know you're going through some rough times right now. I really do. That's why I've agreed to let you do those illustrations in the first place. For old time's sake. I even deliberately gave you a trivial task. Because I expected Little Red Riding Hood to be something you can draw in your sleep. What I didn't expect is to get this demented nightmare fuel you submitted for a kid's bedtime story. There is no way in hell I'm using this, and I already regret agreeing to a payment in advance. Please, get your shit together. This is private. Two souls. So passionate, so talented, and yet they wanted to build something so ordinary. A home, a wife, a family, peaceful life. Betrayal of everything that made them both artists. And yet, they clung to it. We are truly thrilled to hear that you accepted our humble proposition. After discussing dates with my colleague, we find this date the best time to open the exhibition. We need time to set everything up. Getting a piano to our gallery will be no small feat.
they don't understand what it takes to make a good painting. The work doesn't start with the brush. Just like family doesn't start with marriage. It starts with canvas. I can't remember the last time I wore these. The last time I could move freely. Now, a tiny bit to the left. Yes, just like that. Hold that pose. I want to get all those lovely curves just right. <laughs> I think I have the music for all the paintings now. I'm going to play it for you this evening. You're going to love it. Sorry I haven't written in a while. I've been swarmed with work. I gotta tell you, your last letter was... troubling, to say the least. I just can't believe she would set fire to your old paintings. Why would she do that? The Lady in Black especially? That was your tribute to her, wasn't it? I don't know what to tell you except to get her some professional help pronto. You could probably talk to someone as well. With all that's happened, I'm sure it would do you some good. I probably don't need to tell you that the buyer was sorely disappointed with the news. The new pieces just aren't selling as well as the classics. Anyway, I'll keep looking. You just hang in there and focus on your work. I know you still have it in you. I believe in you.
No matter what we did, the fireplace just wasn't enough to warm this room. This is fine. This is good. Th these are great conditions. I can finish it. I can. I will. I need to. For all our sakes. For our family. For a family? Or just for you? Go on. Tip the scales. Paint. had the most beautiful dream last night. I dreamt he came to me, embraced me, loved me, as he once did. But we both know that while I dreamed my silly little dream, it was you, it was you he really lusted for. Don't worry, you're not alone. Perfect relationships may look great on the silver screen, but the rest of us mortals have to face the simple truth. Nobody's perfect. And you know what? That's fine. In fact, many loving couples struggle with day-to-day -day life in a relationship. This does not make them any less special. It just takes some work. And we're here to help. Our consultants, all trained experts in their field, will help you identify the source of your troubles and deal with it at your own pace. Whether it's simple miscommunication, money problems, or conflicting personalities, where there's a problem, there's always a solution. And remember, it's never too late. Ever run out of rain?
How can two people who once loved each other so fully, so profoundly, drift so far apart? My husband barely speaks to me anymore. He just slithers in and out of his study, obsessively working on one failed painting after another. He won't even sleep with me anymore. I can tell he's disgusted by me. The look he gave me the other day. That pathetic, hurtful look. A combination of shame, guilt, and repulsion. <laughs> I've come to realize that I've become a monster in my husband's eyes. It feels like nothing a woman should ever experience. Still, being the good wife that I am, I decided to realize my husband's fantasy. If he thinks me a monster, I will sure as hell act the part. Watch him drown. Dear sir or madam, we must kindly, albeit strongly, urge you to keep your voices down during the night. Your marital problems, while regrettable, are a private matter and should remain that way. They are certainly of no concern to us and especially our children. Please. Consider that not everyone is a freelance artist. Some of us have to get up early and work for a living. We need our sleep. We must also warn you that if things continue the way they are now, we will be forced to call the police. My home is my castle. Locked inside, I am safe. felt as if it wasn't my hand that wrote the letters when using it. What we witness today, while entirely worthless in artistic terms, might be an invaluable case study for psychologists. These harsh words came from none other than Jason Hughes. The famed critic was one of the first to appreciate the works of... and whose praise once contributed to his first spectacular success. When asked if such brutal criticism was indeed called for, especially in light of the recent tragic events, Hughes responded, quote, as critics, it is our duty to critique art, but not to judge the artist. The man has been through a lot lately, and obviously it has taken its toll on him. 
Still, if we were to remain silent and pretend this is even remotely acceptable, we would be doing the artist a disservice. Other critics were only slightly more lenient, as the... The thought alone that the most beautiful piece of art doesn't have my name on it is killing me. So... Will you marry me? In an unexpected experimental streak in his usually conservative endeavors, Thomas Caldwell hosted an extraordinary exhibition opening in his gallery. Quote, This is a great day for me and my wife, said in the opening speech. Quote, For us, this is not only an exhibition, this is how we want to live our life. Music accompanies my paintings, just as she will accompany me in the future. It is rumored that after the exhibition, some kind of arrangement was set between Caldwell and... I have a responsibility. Finish it! Anyone can paint on a linen canvas. I am not anyone. First, I looked for a canvas. Not just any canvas. I had to find a knife. Not one of those bread ones. It needed to be as sharp as a razor. So I used a razor, in fact, and then carefully flayed the skin. Booze helped keep my hand steady. Bring me back. Show me. Please, I need you.
moths drawn to the fire between them. No matter if it the flame was desire, despair, or hate. I hereby resign from service as maiden. House. seeing you like this you're not well you were sweating and shaking all night and, and now there you are locked in your workshop as usual this whole tortured artist nonsense has got to stop you keep the fire in your office just to stop me don't you you hate me that much Push me away. This is my house. You can't keep locking me in. You're so afraid of fire. How can you cut off the means of escape? I'm freezing, for God's sake. death, defy entropy, defy the flames, finish it!
Here are the calculations you asked for. You need to also include the cost of lamps for every room. I don't care how much it costs. She's afraid of fire. We will have electricity, and that is that. Let's talk about the symbolic aspects of your work. I'd rather not. Why is that? A symbolism is a word that gets thrown around a lot, usually when people don't really know what to make of you. Uh, the worst question you could possibly ask me is, what did you mean by that? If it was that simple, I wouldn't have painted it. I would have just told you. Of course, we can talk in general about themes that have always inspired me. Duality, conflict. I think that all art revolves around some sort of struggle. Whether or not we're able to see it, of course, is, is an entirely different matter. Why did you stop? That tool was perfect. Honey, please, just a little longer. At least until I finish painting this one part. Oh, don't make me beg. you asked for. You need...
It's been a while. It took me six months to be able to hold a pen again. Six long and painful months. But I finally did it. It still hurts, but the pain is just bearable enough for me to jot down a few lines. Oh, the things we take for granted. Wow, that's deep. I think I better rest some more before I put ancient philosophers to shame. many times, and yet I could never find the courage to face you directly. Not until now. You always wanted to have a huge guard. Green calmed your nerves, you said. Is this the right door for me? No accidents, no weakness. Just fire from the depths of your soul. Finish it! Ass up today. I'm resigning from work at this house. I think I don't have to explain reasons. 
You know how life in this house looks. If I could give you some advice, think about being more understanding and a bit nicer to future servants. I'm done. I'll do it myself. Keeping the house from breaking apart can't be that hard. Why can't you understand? I'm working in here! I swear, if I'm interrupted one more time... Thing that could make her smile. I needed to remove the flesh from the bone. At first, I was lost as to how, but then I sawed it off with a handsaw, boiled it, then put the bone in a mortar. I had to get one, obviously. This was not something I'd done before. Finally, I mixed the dust with some white paint. It made for a lovely undercoat. Honey, what in the world are you doing? What did the doctor say about straining yourself? Leave that thing alone. It's not going anywhere. Their life started to fall apart. Everything he touched turned to rot.
Everything I touch breaks. Good, solid undercoat. A primer that will hold it all together so it doesn't rot. is breaking around us. While I can certainly understand that you are upset, and I have nothing but sympathy for your wife and yourself, I must categorically state that I do not wish to receive any further correspondence from you in this matter. Any skin graft procedure is extremely complicated and inherently associated with the risk of failure. Having stated that, I assure you that me and my colleagues at St. Anne have made every effort to ensure a positive outcome for your wife. Personally speaking, I believe we have done the best job possible considering the extent of tissue damage. You are, of course, entitled to your opinion, and I can certainly understand your disappointment. What I do not understand is how you seem to think writing hateful letters to me or my fellow doctors will ameliorate the situation. As I've already stated, I can certainly understand you've been under a lot of stress as of late, and thus I will not press charges if you refrain from any further correspondence. Let me make it absolutely clear that I will not tolerate any further threats aimed at my staff, my family, or myself. If you wish to seek psychological help, I can have my assistant provide contact information for several specialists who would be more than competent to help you get through these hard times. Terribly sorry for your inconvenience, but we've seen no fluctuations of power in your area. And see no issues in the neighborhood. And since you didn't allow entry to our electricians, uh, we cannot help you in any way.
Some paintings defy simple words, let alone critique. A basic knowledge of the subject is an absolute must if one is to even try taming them. Babyface is one such painting. This art anomaly draws tens of thousands of mediocrity enthusiasts and Sunday abstraction aficionados. In reality, it looks like a result of a week-long art marathon of a not very well-adjusted painter locked in a dark basement. Leaving aside the horrible execution, the painting excels in a hideous, notes today, even worse than before. The sad part is, I agree with every word. Hello? Hello? Yes, speak. Yes. What? What? What fire? fire? Oh, God. Is she... she... Which hospital? Which hospital? I I'm on my way. Not like her. 
I won't let go. I won't let my passion decay. I can't. I would never. I will finish it. If I am to be honest, I can't say your letter was unexpected. Numerous colleagues have informed me that you had previously sought their advice in this matter, and while it is perfectly understandable for a patient to demand a second opinion, I would think 16 concurring opinions would be enough. Still, out of respect for you and your wife, I have examined the case thoroughly, and I have to concur with my colleagues. Involuntary muscle spasms are not uncommon with patients who have suffered burns as severe as your wife did. What you refer to as a freakish grin, or an unnerving yelp, though many would find such expressions hurtful, could indeed be manifestations of nerve damage. The other symptoms you mentioned do not seem to be physiological, but rather purely psychological in nature. Traumatic events can lead to severe stress, and that is nothing to be ashamed of. As to your demand that we fix your wife, you have to understand that what she went through cannot be undone with one simple procedure. It is a long, arduous process that will require all your strength and support. Please feel free to contact me or my colleagues should you wish to discuss a long-term rehabilitation program. Done. Found his little collection of empty bottles this morning. I reacted <laughs> badly. I I know it's hard for him too, but god damn it, he should know better. With a small child in the house. Oh, that's just irresponsible. It's all your fault.
put more and more locked doors between us, but it's my drinking that ruins the family? <laughs> this is childish. the fire. So this light is still light. Are you insane with those candles? You will burn. We have electricity. who I am. Without it, I'm broken. I have to finish it. All right, let's try this again. Finally managed to play a little. 
if banging on the keys awkwardly counts as playing, I won't lie. It drives me insane not to have full control of my fingers. In any case, I was promptly berated by my loving husband, who said I should be resting. I know he means well. But how will I ever get better if I don't work at it? The worst thing is, I could swear I smelled liquor on his breath. Oh, God, please. Not this again. a jar and a plastic tubing. I siphoned gas before. I knew how it was done. I stuck the tube in a vein and sucked on it until blood filled my mouth. Then put the tube in the jar and it just kept coming. And a taste of copper haunted me the entire night. Why didn't I think of a syringe? Children change every... Reach for your own experience. I know what it is to be a parent. What changes with a child? Channel it! We had an agreement, a deadline that you prolonged for the third time now. If you don't finish this screenplay, someone else will.
Here, son. It'll help with the pain. Come on! What happened to you when your daughter was born? Tell me! It's me. Mama? Did something happen? I... don't know. I don't feel good. I don't like this place. What do you mean you don't feel good? Do you need a doctor? No. It, it's dark in here. I'm scared. Mom, it's night. I think you just had a bad dream. Everything will be okay in the morning. I imagine the lighthouse gets lonely, but come on. It's you who wanted to go there. No, you don't understand. It's dark. It's awful, and I can't write. Everything is... Hello? Hello? Fuck! Now that's no way to greet your muse. What your surprise? Creation isn't pretty. You pushed a human being into the world, and now you need to do the same with a book. I'm here to help you with that. How? Don't ride city buses. This is your chance to end segregation. How? She asks. <laughs> the same way I helped the painter, the musician, and the actor. All you have to do is choose. Your voice will be heard. It won't. It never is. when the daughter was born. Wow. The reward for the most cliche line goes to me. And now? With my help, it's possible. Do you choose to use it? Say it. I do. I choose your help. Then, it is done. Hello? Oh, thank God you're okay. What happened? What do you mean? I, uh... You were scared, and the call was cut off, and... Oh, that? That's nothing. The generator died. It's fine now. Oh. Okay. I guess that's good. How do you feel? You sounded upset. I'm worried. I'm good. Mm, but... I'm good, son. It's as you said. I'm exactly in the place I wanted to be. Are you... Yes, I'm sure. I need to get back to work. Good night. Love you. Moths drawn to the fire between them. No matter if it the flame was desire.
despair, or hate. He tried to pull himself together. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Jesus! Did you just buy half of the department store? Honey, you don't even know yet if it's gonna be a boy or a girl. Sometimes, you must be in the dark to see.
God, I am such an idiot. To think that someone like me could ever compete with you in all your sublime beauty, everlasting, immortal. Even though you've not been born yet, I can already feel your presence. It's simply amazing. I just can't believe how lucky I am. A year ago, all I had was talent and ambition. Now, against all odds, I have a career, a loving husband, and you. I've never been a deeply religious person. I guess what other people look for in a sermon, I found in perfecting my art. But now, I can't help but feel like there's a higher power watching over me. They once told me that I would never succeed as a musician. Now, I'm playing sold-out concerts at some of the most prestigious venues in the country. They also said I had a difficult character and that I would never find a soulmate. Guess again? Finally, a doctor once told me that I would never be able to have children of my own. And yet, here you are, within me. I am quite possibly the happiest woman in the world. I love you so much. As for your question, my sister tells me that Anne Blackwood is an extraordinary childminder. From what I saw, she deserves such praise.
What do you stand to win? Time for you to choose a side. <laughs> what? What's so funny? You beat me again. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why I even bother. My little bird loved this game. some peace and quiet to work. Is that too much to ask? This house is not a playground. <laughs> Your child is barely two years old. It's absolutely normal that she doesn't talk yet. It's not the nanny's fault. And no, stimulating your daughter's mind by reading her Nietzsche is not a good idea. For God's sake. I know she adores that toy, but I don't know. Something about it is very unsettling. Maybe it's the way she plays with it. She's not a happy child. It shows sometimes when she plays. It breaks my heart to see it. Cutting your hair doesn't hurt, Bertie. brush as soft as a child's hair.
You like it, my little bird? Okay, we'll buy it. It will look great on the fireplace, don't you think, honey? Is this supposed to be funny? If she really endangered your child, then yes. I should have let her express herself. Earlier today, a typical quiet and peaceful neighborhood witnessed a scene straight out of a crime drama as social services accompanied by armed police officers descended upon the residence of a once famous painter and a recent widower. Apparently, the man had broken into a children's care center downtown and absconded with one of the young patients. Our sources claim that the girl was in fact the culprit's daughter, who had previously been removed from his care after a family court ruling. After unsuccessful attempts at negotiation, fearing that the man might harm the child, police officers stormed the building and apprehended the suspect. Eyewitnesses claim that as the paramedics escorted the girl out of the house, the man, still in handcuffs, fell to his knees and repeatedly exclaimed, Please, she's all I have left. A truly tragic turn.
Near the blueberry bush by the Emerald Creek, there once lived a duck who's a bit of a freak. Not content to just splash away in the rivers. She liked tearing out hearts and chewing on livers. Near the blueberry bush by the Emerald Creek, Be an example. Finish it! Finish.
This was a special brush, like a horsehair brush, but different. At that point, I hesitated. Will this really work? Fuck it. I was already halfway through, and besides, it's not like I can just put it all back and forget the whole thing. He simply wasn't enough. It's hopeless. I... I just can't take it anymore. I might as well try to paint with both of my arms broken. Art is beauty, writes a painter recognized widely for his talent a few years back. These painters, as they call themselves, either forgot what beauty is or decided to insult it. Waste of paint, waste of talent, waste of time. Run!
Everything I do, I do to stop thinking. To stop the questions. Is this really the house I know? Where am I? What, what is behind that door? What is behind me? The questions are worse than anything that can actually happen. Screeching arsonists. Echoing screams. They stop at nothing. I won't go down easy. It is no wonder that an old star rebels against the light of the sun that outshines it. Truth is, those paintings have been bland and overly conventional for many years now. They don't evoke feelings. They don't say anything important. They are, at best, pleasant to look at. Art shouldn't be pleasant. It should be world-changing. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. While this is true of many works of art, sometimes the words that come to mind are hardly flattering. Babyface is one such painting. This artistic anomaly continues to inspire thousands of mediocrity enthusiasts, when in fact, it is little more than a sideshow attraction. Frankly, this is hardly even art. It's merely a doodle. It's what you get when you lock a not very well adjusted painter in a dark basement for a week. Even putting aside the flawed execution, the painting is still deplorable. You left me alone. malcontents. Judging by the silence that has now fallen over the house, I can safely assume that he's finally passed out. 
Undoubtedly, surrounded by empty bottles and tattered pieces of canvas that have become his preferred bedfellows. Every time it happens, I pray it will be the last. I pray fervently, passionately. Our Lord in heaven, let him crack his head open and the rot spew out. Let him cut his wrist on the glass and the red bile flow. Let him choke on his own vomit so that we may all find peace. For if you don't, one day I will find the courage to walk down the steps and end him myself. You of all should know. It's not the lack of will that stays my hand. Oil's texture is everything. You'll love it. I don't doubt it. He's on about the damn rats again. I don't think I've even seen one. But that doesn't stop him from laying out traps all over the place. He claims he can hear them in the walls, and that there must be hundreds of them. God, I fucking hope it's true. I hope they crawl out at night and eat you in your sleep. You cruel, self-obsessed, pathetic, drunk. And so our agreement, although fruitful, must come to an end. We seek someone who understands modern art a little bit better, who is able to engage with it. And you, sir, don't seem to be that person anymore. Your reactions to other reviews and letters from our readers don't encourage further collaboration. Thank you. 
I need to start practicing. I don't care what he thinks about it. I'm not myself without music. Chop, chop! Finish it or die trying. Finish it if it kills you. Don't let the doubt get you.
Art is not about watching. It's about feeling. With all senses, every part of your body. It's the only way to understand it. The only way to eliminate doubt.
You deserve this. All of it. All of it. I needed something to add the... How should I put it? Final touches. A finger. I needed a finger. Chopped it off. Easier than sawing a leg. Washed it. Dried it in an oven. Fell asleep. Almost burned it. Will I manage to pull this off? You like it, my little bird? Okay, we'll buy it. It will look great on the fireplace, don't you think, honey? My little bird loved this game. In the end, what he needed was a sharp focus. He had to finish it. In any case, as your lawyer, I advise you to refrain from any imprudent actions. In other words, don't do anything stupid. We still have a chance of winning this. Believe it or not, I've gotten clients out of deeper shit than this. Just don't make it any worse. Lay low for a while and let me appeal the court order. This social worker definitely has it in for you. We can use that to our advantage. Portray you as a victim of the system. A husband in mourning, a momentary lapse of reason, an overzealous bureaucrat. Trust me, this is our best option. Considering what you've been through lately, I'd say we have a good 50-50 chance of a good outcome. But not if you keep trying to convince everyone that you've gone completely insane. No more outbursts, no more rambling. Uh, better yet, no public appearances whatsoever. You can still get your daughter, though. Home sweet home. Dear utterly despised traitor, come, you turned on me in time of need, we'll worry about it later. Now you have your prize, watch our demise. One last spectacle by a half-dead couple, a feast for your ears and eyes. Auditorium is ready.
Dune. Don't forget. Nothing will stop me from finishing it. Just finish it. Just a little bit more and it will be finished. 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 Finish. Finish. Find it in yourself and finish it. Finish it. Finish. You mind explaining this to me? I know what it is. Care to tell me how it got in my workshop? Stop lying! We both know it couldn't have gotten there on its own. Kill to be able to work. I will. I need to finish it. Let's consider our options. Knife. Pros. Quick. Personal. Painful. Cons. Too messy. Might not have the strength to pull it off. Painkiller overdose. Pros. Readily available. Easy to administer. Cons. Not painful enough. Wouldn't learn his lesson. Gun. Pros, quick and easy. Cons, would need to get it first. We wouldn't want him to die too quickly. Rat poison. Pros, easily obtainable. 
beautifully ironic considering his recent obsession. Cons. Might take too long. Poisoned paint. Prose. Poetic. Cons. Which poison? Where would we get it from? Have to see it. It won't be finished until you see it. To create is to reach into chaos, and chaos is darkness. Warm, soft, swarming. He understood it in the end. Will you? my art in the workshop. The world is my canvas. The work is never finished. She looks at me. Are you sure you'll finish this commission? She asks. Doubt in her eyes. Sometimes I just want to. Let go! You! It's you who brought this chaos upon us! To find me, you must embrace chaos. Help 
I'm useless. What have I become? My own body is a cage. A weak child is to be eaten, not nurtured. You think yourself an artist? I believe in you. We'll get through this. I trust you. Yes, things are better now. I think we can make this work. I really do. You know, even though you are my rival and the source of all my sorrows, you're also the only one I can still talk to, the only one who will listen. I'm not sure if it's funny or merely pathetic. <laughs> Probably both. My love, I wish I could do what all mothers do and tell you that monsters aren't real. But it wouldn't be true. Life can create things of exquisite beauty, but it can also twist them into hideous beings. Selfish, violent, grotesque, monstrous. It hurts me to say that your father has turned into one such monster. And I'm afraid the disease that afflicted his mind has taken hold of me as well. It sickens me to think what we've put you through. There is no excuse. I only ask of you, though I know I do not have the right to do so, to try and forgive us. I despise what your father has become, but I love and pity him all the same. I only hope you can find it in your heart. To feel the same about him. About me. I wish I could see you blossom into a strong, beautiful woman. I wish I could be there for you. But I can't. This is the only way. Goodbye. I think I should be happy. Why am I not happy? I have a beautiful daughter. I think she is. I know she is. So why can't I look at her without feeling sick? I used to have a loving husband. Wonderful. Sensitive. Now, all I see is this strange man who only cares about his paintings. Like they matter at all. It's all so pointless. Music used to help, doesn't anymore.
What is taking so long? Open this fucking door! I need to go! Open up! Hell is... Oh, God. No. No, 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 What have you done? No! I finally figured it out. And it's all thanks to you. You've showed me that there's no other way. Your sad smile confirms what should have been obvious. We will not speak again. Finally, someone had to bear witness. I couldn't just look at my own work. Art and the artist needed an audience, a critical eye on things. I knew what I had to do. I gouged it, scooped it up like ice cream, felt like a butcher, a monster. But at least there was to come something beautiful from all this filth. It hurts. Why did you do it? You 
You wanted me to die. To go by yourself. Bring me back. Do you see me? I didn't know how to tell you that your scars don't mean anything to me. But I still want to love you. Show me. We weren't good parents, were we? We tried so hard, but it just wasn't meant to be. Protect her! Where are you going? you could do with that. Such a power coming from your fingertips. Even the most delicate brush of any key made the world stop. How gone. said our family is everything they told you you wouldn't be able to get. Is it lost? I was just worried, you know? Help me. What will you say about it? How will you end his story? You know, even though you are my rival and the source of all my sorrows, you're also the only one I can still talk to, the only one who will listen. I'm not sure if it's funny or merely pathetic. <laughs> Probably both. God, I am such an idiot. To think that someone like me could ever compete with you in all your sublime beauty. Everlasting. Immortal. No, this is private. Hello. It's about time for us to talk, don't you think? I mean, I've seen you in my house so many times. And yet I could never find the courage to face you directly. Not until now. I used to hate you. 
Not anymore. I think even now, in spite of everything, I still might love you. You see, I finally understand. I know how you must feel. Lost. Alone. It took me a while, but I finally realized. Even with us, you've always been alone. I recognize that now as the quintessential part of your being. And I admit hoping we could become a true part of your life was a grave error on my part. A grotesque misunderstanding. Still, if we're to make any sense of all this, if any of this ever mattered to you, for us, Yes, that's it, my love. I am so, so sorry. No, it's a lie. It's always been a lie. It won't bring them back. I see it now. I know what must be done. I believe in the end, he knew that one can't make art, a true art, without cracks, without breaks, and without pain. It was done. He finished it. Or did he? My palate was sated, nostrils stimulated, standing, venerated. It was never true, was it? Even before the debts of desperation, when the book became a hit, I already knew what I lost. I knew who she took from me. Ten years is a lot of time for a person to fail, to hit the bottom, to explore it and to find the darkest secrets of their craft. I'm coming back there. I'm getting him back. I wanted to thank you for this book. I, I've been struggling with my vocation as an artist and uh, reading about struggles helped me greatly in arriving at a decision.
Ah, hello. It is always good to hear from one of our riders. Bring him back! I'm afraid it's, it's not possible at the moment. You know where I'm at, sad man? I'm at your precious lighthouse! Yes, I am aware of that. Don't interrupt me! I'm at the lighthouse, and I know how to hurt your precious queen. I know how to break that pact. So either you bring him back, or I'll show you what I can do with words! I will warn you that it is a fruitless endeavor. I don't give a fuck about your warnings! I will destroy her. I will get him back! I will write my own story! Look, I bought his favorite wine. I thought it fitted the occasion. I think... I always loved how broken you are. Congratulations on your comeback! We are delighted that after a decade, you still remember about our hermitage. Make yourself at home. I mean, after all, it is the only one you have. What the fuck? Maybe, deep in his heart, he longed for them. For any presence other than his own. Happened. I struggle with the part where daughter enters the scene. Too close to home? No. It's this place. This fucking island. This lighthouse. I was afraid and called. The generator died. I went to restart it. I know it happened. And then maybe I was high? Or I actually saw my muse and had a conversation with her. Called later. But I didn't have time for it. I knew what to write. The block was gone. I knew how to finish this book. Thought you got me? Well, guess what? I can write without you. I always could.
Let's get this over with. Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Why are we here? They asked. Although they already knew. To build the character. To act. That was what they did for all of their lives. They did it for love. Did it because of a burning passion. A flame within them that wanted to be set free. And above all, they did it to run. To forget. To be anyone else. Everyone else to keep the one story that mattered, the one that really happened, unused and intact, secret. They couldn't even recall it now. They would though, walking the corridors of this strange ship and the ship from their past, remembering their first characters and why they played them, remembering the borrowed bravery of the pirate crew, finding out who they were before they learned to put on all the masks. In their time, they played the parts of many men, observed others, and were observed, wore the characters as if they were second skins, layers upon layers of people who wore their face. Now it was time to shed these skins, to meet themselves again, to remember, to choose.
Listen, once you get there, just do what you have to do. Get to the set and build this character for him. That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, I know you've told me a million times how much you hate the seat. And I'm telling you, this gig is just too good to pass up. All third-class passengers this way, please. Did you check the lower decks this time? I swear to God, if we find any stowaways again, you'll never set foot on a ship again. Never met the guy in person, but few people have. That's why you hear all these rumors about him being broken or disfigured. All that nonsense.
guy's got a reputation. Makes his actors jump through hoops before he even lets them on the set. Supposed to be some new method of building the character. Bunch of artsy fartsy bullshit if you ask me. Just go with it. Guy doesn't take no for an answer. So what if the guy's a little nuts? He's a director. He comes with a job. I mean, what's he gonna do? Kill ya? Before the world told you who you should be, do you remember who you were? I believe in you. Wake up, Mr. Hardy. We've got to get out of this godforsaken prison. Before we rot.
Are we, are we really going? Lily, I, I... That's Captain Baines to you, Mr. Hardy. Remember the name, Quartermaster, or I'll have you walk the plank. These images, memories of you, they've been haunting me. And yet you cling to them, because without me, you have nothing. I'm back, Mahardy. Scouted out the whole area. Looks like there's a trail we can follow. A trail? Aye. Left by fellow pirates, no doubt. To lead us to a safe harbor. There she is, Mr. Hardy, the fastest vessel ever built, ready to set sail for the land of the flame. I don't see any sails. Shh. We must make our way aboard, quietly.
Mr. Hardy. Too many of them scurvy dogs to take head on. Lily, I want to go home. Quartermaster, steal yourself. Be your heart soaked in doubt, or be there a fire burning within. In the spotlight, they were safe. Their world controlled and understandable. I know you did it. You killed her. The truth is, it was her killing me. Slowly. All this time.
the land we've seen behind shut eyes, the one of bright shores caressed by tide, where there's no pain, no fear, no fury, no lies. There we shall stand tall, our hearts full of pride. If your dreams are bold and by no man bound, if your soul is strong, unlike any other, able to build walls or tear to the ground, then yours is this world, my little brother. Not all lives are created equal, but one can become a vessel to carry within the flame of another. Who are we to deny it? Who are we? This fellow is wise enough to play the fool.
act of creation always begins with an act of destruction. Obedience. It's something you should learn.
Look what I found, Mr. Hardy. This chart will lead us away from peril and into safe harbor. It takes courage to stand up to someone stronger than you. I could never do it. I wasn't brave enough, but she was. Bloody well do it himself. Will do. Hurry, we have to secure it. They'll be here any moment. Lily, I, I'm scared. You should be scared. You know what happens if they find us. They'll send us back. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
door behind you. Without me, you are just as lost as they are. Run, but do you know the way? You build one character, you destroy the other. Which one is which? We are now entering the eastern part of the borough. This particular area holds a special place in my heart as I grew up not far from here myself. A few things have changed, it seems, for better or worse. I see children playing in the streets, not a care in their little minds. If it wasn't for their shabby clothes, one could almost forget about the crushing poverty that plagues so many of the local families. But what do we have here? Park bench, alone. Perhaps he won't mind if we pick his brain a bit. Good morning, young man. What's your name? Good, good morning, young man. What's your... Good morning. Morning. Good man. Your morning. What's your name? Now, they knew a part of the answer to the director's question, before the world told them what to be. They were stowaways, hidden deep in the entrails of the beast that was the ship. They hid and fought for survival, losing more and more of themselves. Now they had to descend again into the entrails of the beast that was their own mind find what they lost. It was still there, buried, hidden away, locked in a vault. A prison of themselves. Deep down, there was only instinct. A need and an act. Hunger and violence. And was there also a choice?
Do you remember hunger? Yeah, uh, could we take this again? Uh, <laughs> there's something wrong with the picture. I, I think you must have moved. You just don't look quite yourself. Excuse me, I'm such a big fan. Could you please sign? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I think I mistook you for someone else.
You are so delicious.
the heart. Despair consumes the soul. A life crumbles. Get up, Quartermaster. What's done is done. No use crying. We need to venture forth and find some fresh supplies. Here, take this. It will help you find your strength. is common. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity.
Looks like the lights got to it before us. What was that? Shh. We're not alone here. like someone took a bite or something come let's not wait for it to come back Look, there's something there. Over there, can't you see it? No, this isn't what I saw. You have to believe me. We're out on the edge of the world, Mr. Hardy. Nothing is as it seems.
This one's empty too. We need to keep looking. Lily, I mean, Captain, there's something out there in the dark. Hush now. Stay behind me. I won't let anything happen to you. Leave it, Mr. Hardy. We're not that desperate yet. James! I said leave it!
Trust your instinct. Tip the scale. No. You didn't take it. You, you star. You let it go. You regret it. You gave up. You'll never make it. She held the boy's head in the gutter till he promised to never do it again. There's always someone stronger than you. What is forever, if not merely a prolonging of misery? I would gladly give it up for a life of meaning, of purpose. No good. We'll never find any food. James, look at me. And it's all my fault. I said, look at me. I am Captain Baines, the Black Wanderer, the Slayer of the Cyclops, the Seeker of the Flame. I will see us through this. Don't you ever doubt me.
Maybe there's some food here. Come on, we have to go. Oh. Did you hear that? This way. James, run! of the city it beats no more we failed them this world never deserved us let's watch it burn Remember our treasure? It's not far. This way.
did it, Mr. Hardy. Now go. You think you can survive without me? Bloody roots. They had each other. You are alone. the other. Which one is which? You follow reason, you see through it, you cut away the strings. There was life before the ship. A reason for their escape. They didn't dare look back. 
But their past fueled them for years. They harnessed it without remembering. They transformed fear, anger, and despair into art. The art was called outstanding, haunting, unforgettable. But they did forget. They did their best to forget. And when they weren't looking, their past entangled them, bound them. Their roots suffocated them, pulled them under, away from the air and the light. They had to cut them away. Only then could they be truly free. Come, faithful servant, for tonight we brew a ghoulish concoction, the world's strangest stew. Seasoned by sadness, burnt from within, ravaged by madness, rotten with sin. Torn up by conflict, ravaged by war, flawed on the surface, warped to its core. Hollowed by longing, hardened by loss, once slick and polished, 
has lost all its gloss. Look at it bubble. Look at it shake. The beast! It's awake! Look, Jimmy. Father's screening the Black Wanderer. He's almost over. Time to go. Don't step into the light, or he'll see you. I told you to hide it. I told you to keep it safe. How could you let him take it? It's all we have left of her. You have to find it. You have to take it back. upon this family. I give everything, and what do I get in return? A blackened heart, uprooted by tragedy, skewered by pain. That's all you've ever given me? That's all you were ever good for? Keep her close to your heart. 
Don't let her be forgotten. She gave everything for you. Prove that it was worth it. That you weren't a mistake. Weak, useless, no good to anyone. It's like I was never there. It would have been better if I was never there. Let's go. Father will be leaving the projection room soon. When the world becomes too cruel, we look for a place to hide. The dark can be many things. It can be refuge. Or it can be hell. It is whatever you make it. The dark can be a silent place. Silence can be empty. Or it can speak volumes. It is whatever you make it. The dark can be a lonely place. Solitude can be a sentence. Sometimes, it's better to hide, to let the dark in. Father's oh, coming! Quick! Get- oh, Please! I said, get in! land is a wonder to be sure but how will i ever get home home 
Now, why'd you want to go to such an awful place? Hush, it's already started. Come on, he'll get mad if we're not back before him. <laughs> what is that thing? I thought I knew, but now I'm not sure. Oh, Jimmy, it has to take shape in your head first. Otherwise, it'll just stay formless. This is why you come in. Go on, pick it up. It seems the tables have turned, Quartermaster. Curse you and your mutinous puppets. I will not make this easy for you. If I am to meet my doom today, it will be by your hand, by your action. Don't do it. That's right. Don't hesitate. You know I wouldn't. Don't. Yes, show me you're strong, like me. Lily, are you all right? Lily, Lily! <gasps> Lily, I thought you were gone. That's because I was. Well, she is. What? Who I was a moment ago is no more. Now, I can become someone else. No one understands them. No one will understand you. Watch. This is the best part. Come. We can't stay any longer. I know. Henceforth, I shall be Captain Baines, the Black Wanderer. But Captain Baines isn't a girl. Steady your tongue, Quartermaster. I can be whoever I choose to be. If your little mind says otherwise, then to the depths with it.
brother. He was always there, following in my footsteps, silent, smiling sadly, like a warm shadow, always there, but never really present. Sometimes, when darkness fell across town, he'd sneak out of the house. He'd look up into the night sky, watching the stars, but never really seeing them. What he really saw was a thousand souls on fire. His eyes would light up. The stars were already there. At that moment, I knew he had it in him to make a thousand hearts bleed. A thousand heads turn, a thousand eyes weep. My brother, the silent dreamer, dreaming that a day would come when we could leave it all behind. The journey of a lifetime, a light on the horizon, a flame to call his own. Yes. He had it in him to make a thousand souls burn, make them feel alive, make them live forever, a thousand lives. But never mind, never mind. There we were, dreaming our souls away into the night sky when we could almost reach out and take it. A cruel shade eclipsed the sun. Our dream was gone. Something else took its place. Something vicious. Something... No, what would the Black Wanderer do now? Don't worry, one day we'll get to see how it ends. Something bad happened. What if I can't find you? Shh. Listen to my voice. Hold it deep inside, and I will always be there for you. Forever? Forever. If you want to make it to the end, just remember, the monster can be scary, but it's sad too, because at the end of the day, it's just as lost as we are.
Show yourself, ye one-eyed freak. I'll make ye wish ye had a spare. My hero. No, please. Stay out of it, Lily. Why, why can't you just, just leave us alone? You filled the boy's head with nonsense. As if he wasn't useless enough! You're... you're the one who's useless! You cruel, one-eyed freak! What did you call Get him? Get away from him! You... you monster!
father. It's today. I know. I'm going to see her. Take care of the house. Goodbye. Did you get anything for James? It's his day too. I... I had to buy something for your mother. That's all I could afford. You're just like him. Come on, there's nothing left for us here. It hurts. 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 It, is it over? No, Mr. Hardy. It's only just beginning. Spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel. A disturbing occurrence happened during a public reading, and the author acted strange from the start, but what happened after a particular reader's question? I came back. After a decade of glory and shame, I came back. I don't know how the fuck they knew I did, but I don't care. I will get my son back, or I will hurt them. I can write without her. I know I can, and this is, this must be the thing that hurts her, destroys her. Light symbolism, electric, fire, warmth, destruction, safety, key for painting, did it help him? This is one thing I won't do.
Hi, Mama. What? How? It's been a while, so just wanted to check on you. I... I'm glad you're writing again. You are? Of course. I know you. It's always been the most important thing in your life. That's... I should probably leave you to it. It's been great hearing from you. Wait, don't... Bye. Don't go! Did you think your art would make you immortal? It's unwatchable now. Corners and shot. You think yourself an artist? Fun breaking his bones and kicking him, watching him spit blood. They were proud of themselves. You're mine. You have nothing to say. Characters, no talent. All your words are empty. Underneath, there is only your ego. I made you. Finish it. Last exhibit. Recreation of exhibit opening with piano. At home. Aruborus. After all these years, they still listen to you. beginning, they used their daughter to fulfill their needs and ambitions. No wonder she grew up to be a woman she was.
so sharp after all this time. Finish it. Now they knew where they came from. Now they could scream themselves free. One glorious act. And then... A vast silence.
Are you not afraid of death? Some people believe in nothing, and so they live for nothing. To live without belief is more terrible than dying. Lily, Captain, I found it, but it's empty. It's all gone. Steady yourself, Quartermaster. Return to the hideout. I'll keep searching on my own. I can help. I, I said go. Go on. Be there for her. Where she was for you. Some parts are not to be played. Some.
What do they seek? What do you seek? Yourself. Themselves. Why? There is only me. Cheer up. You're all right. You're not hurt. You're not upset. 
nothing really happened. You just need to be more careful. Why am I always the one? Why weren't you there? Why didn't you protect me? Why did you let this monster? Useless! Worthless! I hate you! Still here. This is not the end. This pain will pass. The scars will fade. You are mine. They were mine. Look at her. <sighs> She's got her whole life ahead of her. Will it be years? <laughs> or just minutes? You're insane! <laughs> I'm having a, a conversation you cannot hear. <sighs>
did you let this monster? We were meant to live forever. And I will. I will be forever. I will be. I will! Lily, please. 
Please come back. I need you. Hello, my, my name is James, what's yours? That's a funny name. Can you help me find my sister? Drowning in a sea of thirst. I was feasting, but never full. You, my teeth are yours to bear. She's been gone a long time. I'm scared something happened to her. I, I didn't mean to. She told me to go back. No, stop it. It's not true.
wallowing in a sea of shame. I was never one to serve. But for you, I swallow my pride. You're right, it is my fault. Yes, I can still save her. She can live on forever. Show me the way or do what needs to be done. I'm the captain now. So, oh, Captain, we will follow you across the seven seas. Forever. Here we are again. 
You almost had it. <laughs> she lied to me. 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 bad happens what if I can't find you Shh. listen to my voice hold it deep inside and I will always be there for you forever Dreams can stay with you forever. 
Now they knew why they feared freedom, why they hid, flowed with the tide, and pretended to be one with the void inside them. Now in place of the void, there was a sea. Restless, roaring, terrifying. Once they saw it, once they lit a flame in their soul, there was no turning back, no other way. Again, they felt the eyes of eternity upon them. They were here before. They faced that choice in the past. They felt the stare. Now, for the first time, they stared. Do you see now? You tried to fix me. Instead, you broke yourself. tried so hard to bring me back. You called out to me from the void, but something else answered.
Jimmy. Poor, weak, pathetic little Jimmy. Always the victim. Always the burden. An anchor dragging me down. should have lived this long, forever is a very long time. Sometimes, it's better not to be, going away completely. There's no place for me here, only you, whoever that is. I hope you'll be brave this time. I don't think I can. I cannot. You, you cannot help me. Not even now.
How many times have I tried to put the pieces back together? Just to watch them fall apart. Can a man burn before he turns to ash? How could you know? Of all the wasted years, of all the pain it took to bring you here, you don't even know who you are. How many times must before he can truly live. How many times? Look at it! This is what happens when you fail to take control. Run, but do you know the way? You build one character, you destroy the other. Which one is which? You follow reason, you see through it, you cut away the strings. You're not afraid to play your part, you accept the inevitable. You struggle against the current, you fight against all odds. Ah. In the end, there is no right or wrong. There is only... James! Lily! Ah. James! Listen to me! You have to go! No! I'm not leaving! I'll, I'll find a way to reach you! I know you will! You're strong! Stronger than you know! We'll be together again! No matter how long it takes, I will find you. I will.
looking for answers, a purpose long gone, we carry on and on and on. What a cruel part we have to play, to live on one statement away. A vast, Mr. Hardy, a vast. What's gone is gone. What's past is past. For there are things that should not be, and there are wounds that time won't heal. When all seems lost, when all is gone, we do not have to carry on. To put, to put away, away what, what sadness, sadness wrought. wrought. Set your, your aim, aim and, and take your shot. shot. Ah. Just as I thought. A mother long gone, a sister's last breath, a life for a life, a death for a death. The flame that burns the lies away, the truth revealed, let come what may. Lay your head down, brother. Go to sleep. This vow is no longer yours to keep. Don't they understand? Don't they know who I am? My lady, she has chosen me. I am her betrothed. Even now I see her. Her gentle features, as if painted by the finest brush. Fangs that glisten, a seductive smile on her lipless face. My lady, though no artist could capture your true beauty, it is what I have in your absence. She's been quiet for some time. She's testing me, but I will keep my vow. We will be together again. Tails twisting, teeth tearing, piercing my skin, gnawing on my insides. The pain, it tells me I'm the one.
twists and turns, caught in a trap of himself. A maze of machinery, the cruelest of inventions, the engine of the soul. He opens door after door, looking for answers, for meaning. He should tread carefully. Some doors, once opened, are not easily shut. Closer than you think. You always believed that words have the power to set free, and you were right.
When I was a child, I used to lay in bed late at night, staring at the ceiling, listening to my father scream. Scream at my mother, scream at yet another failed masterpiece. Finally, just scream out into the darkness. It became my lullaby. And even when they took me away, the screams followed. 
I was once told that insanity runs in my family. It's time to make it stop. Dear friend, today, before I leave for my new appointment, I intend to make one final attempt to communicate with you. Since you have obviously decided not to answer my calls or letters, I shall endeavor to speak with you in person. If you're reading this, then I have clearly failed, and for that I apologize. Should you choose to ignore me, I will slip this letter under your door. Hopefully you can at least read it, for all time's sake. If me knocking on the door has caused you any discomfort, please know that that was not my intent. I wish I could tell you that I've found some miracle solution to your problem, but unfortunately, such is not the case. Do know that as your legal representative, I always did my best and that is the God's honest truth. Unfortunately, I feel that the issues you're struggling with go way beyond my expertise. At this point, I once again feel the urge to ask you to reconsider seeking professional help, but let's be honest. If you were to listen to me, you would have done it a long time ago. I regret it had to end this way. Know that you and your family will always be in my thoughts. Your old friend, James Jerome Sadler, attorney at law. My beloved, I've been thinking about what happened. I've been trying to understand. My dear, <laughs> help me. I just don't understand. Why would you do it? Did you feel like there was no other way? Tell me, God damn it! What did I do to deserve this? I did my best. You know I did. I gave you everything. Selfish fucking whore! Why would you do this? To us. in here. me like that. That dog is there for a reason. Oh, all right. You can let him out. For now. Still life. <coughs> this place is a mess. I can hear you in there. I'm coming, you furry little bastards! You're not getting away this time! Oh, where did I put that damn 
No, that's not how it went. Maybe... What? Is that? <laughs> yes! That's it! Once again, implore you to give me back my daughter. Give her back. 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 I wonder when was the last time this place saw sunlight? What are you doing? Put that down! You're much too old for that childish nonsense. little girl in red was walking through the woods when suddenly, out of nowhere, jumped out who know who. Eyes glowing bloody red, teeth sharp as razors, and yet the big bad wolf did not seem to faze her. Be careful, little girl, the big bad wolf sneered. You're in fantasy land, where things ain't what they seem. Oh, shush, you big old meanie, the frightened girl exclaimed. You're the only threat in this wonderful land. With my magic crayons, I can do no harm. I can make the trees yellow, turn them upside down, turn grass into candy, make the sky go red. I can do whatever pops into my head. The wolf was unimpressed with his show of skill. You do have the power to do what you will. Alas, I humbly urge you to practice restraint, for you are responsible for what you create. You're nasty, jealous, and mean, said the little girl. I just want to have fun, and you want me to learn. I wish a big old rock would fall down from the sky and crush your big bad mouth into a mincemeat pie. Don't do it, I beg you, the big wolf cried. You lack scale and perspective, my sweet little child. But it was too late. His warning fell on deaf ears. Down came the rock and smashed them all to smithereens.
Creativity is not a toy, it's a gift. Do you want to squander it like all those careless brats out there? I warned you time and time again! I won't let you waste time in these mindless doodles! This is for your own good! The little girl in red came upon a crossroads. There she stopped and wondered, which way should I go? Up jumped the wolf and gave the poor girl a fright. Do not be afraid. I'm not going to bite. I just want to help you in making your choice. Come now, be reasonable. Listen to my voice. One of these paths with danger is fraught, while the other one, most assuredly, is not. The little girl in red took a shortcut she knew through a lovely field of corn all covered in dew but the field grew dark and full of despair an eerie sense of dread filled the morning air the girl heard the wolf yelling from afar you have chosen poorly you will not get far had you only learned how shadow and light intertwined on canvas you could have chosen right the little girl in red ran as fast as she could, her flowing dark hair tucked under her hood. But she quickly got tired, worn out by her flight, and succumbed to the darkness, never to see the light. Finally! Are you ready to embrace true art? Oh, the summer trees. So green and vibrant and full of life, but also young and inexperienced. Let's try to find them a more poignant season, where they are wiser and have some stories to tell. Oh, they sway in the breeze, but are none the wiser, just like you.
Ah, yes, the autumn of life. When man seeks shelter from the elements. Let's see how our little hut fares when the skies grow dark. You see, in the end, all we take for granted is fragile and temporary. Man passes while nature endures. No! Put that down! You are doing so well! I warned you time and time again! I won't let you waste time in these mindless doodles! This is for your own good.
Are you trying to annoy me? This is not what I've taught you. What? You think I'm enjoying this? You think I'm doing this out of spite? Get it right next time and I won't have to fix it for you! Finally, are you ready to embrace true art? You see, in the end, all we take for granted is fragile and temporary. Man passes while nature endures. Speaking of which, I don't think our proud stallion likes the weather. Let's brighten things up a bit.
That's right. The sun bestows its kind rays upon the land. It's getting warmer and warmer until finally. Marvelous, isn't it? I know it seems like a tragedy, but a beautiful tragedy is always better than an unremarkable existence. In his own way, I believe he meant well. He wanted me to excel, hoping that when the time came, I would succeed where he failed. Avoid his mistakes. God knows he made plenty of those. What's wrong with this thing? That dog better not be where I think it is. Get the hell off! I told you not to spoil that fucking muck! there. Oh, come on, don't be afraid. It won't bite. Here, try for yourself. No, no, that, that's not quite right. <sighs> Still not quite there. your crayons. See the colors? Actually, not bad. Look at you, young lady. It looks like 
tell, it runs in the family.
Oh, hey there, young lady. Shouldn't you be in bed? It's all right, you can stay. Just don't make too much noise. Daddy's working. What do you mean, who's that? It's Mommy. What? That's not what Mommy looks like? Well, she does to me. Honey, you have to come out. She's waiting for us. Don't make me do this by myself. supposed to do now I can't do this without you
What was that? Oh, no. Honey, I, I need you. I need my medicine. Oh, please. Oh, it hurts so much. Why won't you help me? Why are you punishing me like this? Whatever I did, I'm sorry. I hate you! Good! At least you can still feel something. I look at you and I see nothing. Not the beautiful girl I fell in love with. Not the mother of my child. Not even the hateful monster you pretend to be. You're just... You can still feel something. I look at you and I see nothing. Not the beautiful girl I fell in love with. Not the mother of my child. Not even the hateful monster you pretend to be. You're just empty. I look at you and I feel nothing. And it scares the hell out of me. 
forgot to say how hideous I am. Go on. I know you want to. Ah, not that again. I know you're disgusted with me. Admit it. You're right. I am disgusted with you. But it has nothing to do with the way you look. I'm disgusted with what you let it do to you. How you let it change you. Princess, Princess, wake up. I need you to get dressed real quick. There are men coming. Some very bad men. They want to take you away from me. But I won't let them. We won't let them, will we? Yes, now I remember. Throughout all the chaos and misery, in his own flawed and misguided way, he did love her after all. His way of expressing it was a different matter altogether. I, grasping at the remains of my sanity, declare this to be my last will and testament. I hereby deem all my previous wills just as worthless as the shallow husks calling themselves my friends and associates. To my agent, Thomas Caldwell, I bestow the hellish vermin that infest my home, praying that they will gnaw away at him endlessly, bleeding him dry just like he did to me. To my publisher, Liam Brickstone, I bequeath the flames that consume the love of my life in hopes they will devour him, along with the wretched whore and the squealing bastard he calls a family. To my lawyer, James Jerome Sadler, I pass on whatever illness has rotted my brain and soul away so that he can feel just as empty and useless as he was to me. To any other parasites that come crawling out of the woodwork, I leave nothing. To hell with all of you. Finally, to my beloved daughter, I leave all my earthly possessions. For what they're worth, I hope they will inspire you to realize your true potential. The final, most precious gift, however, is not mine to give. You will have to discover that on your own. I believe in you, as I always have. Remember that being there. I can hear you out there. Please, please help me. It hurts. Oh, it hurts so much. 
I can't take it anymore. Mm. Yes. Thank you. It's so good to feel that there's still beauty in this world. All right, young lady. Shall we continue? Right. Whatever happens, just keep looking at me and listen. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. The princess was all alone in the dark. And yet, she felt that the evil witch was lurking nearby. As her eyes adjusted to the darkness, she saw something moving in the corner of her eye. And yet, she did not dare to move, for she knew that that would be the end of her. <gasps> the princess heard a fearsome growl. The witch had unleashed her familiar, the hellhound. The monster sniffed at the end. Its perky ears wearing with even the slightest sound. The princess remained motionless, letting the monster pass. There was a stillness in the air. The princess breathed a sigh of relief. For a moment, it seemed like the worst was behind her. And yet she knew that it was not over. There was still danger nearby, waiting for her slightest move. Frozen in terror, she kept looking straight ahead. Suddenly, she heard a terrifying cackle. It was the evil witch herself. The wretched thing despised beauty and innocence, for she had neither. The hag was near, just outside of view, but our heroine didn't dare to look. She had to keep her head straight, lest she be cursed by the witch's foul magic. She could almost feel the chilling touch of the witch's hand at her neck. She felt the sudden urge to run away, but fought it with all her will, for she knew that was precisely what the witch would have wanted. And then, just like that, the chill was gone. She saw a glimmer of light over the horizon. The sun was almost upon her. It was almost dawn. It was almost over. And there. The princess stood triumphant in the sun, smiling as she... Wait, that's not right. Her face. Why is she still... scared? Oh, God. I didn't mean to... Princess... I am so sorry. It's not that he was cruel. It's just that, to him, reality was just a pale reflection of art. He was blind to the world 
Unless it was translated to him through a canvas. It's... me. But what does it mean? There has to be more to this. What is this supposed to... Wait. The lines are... Yes. Now I see it. Like you knew I would. to dig deep, to uncover what my father really wanted me to find. But in the process, I realized what he was trying to tell me. This house was nothing but a tomb. There was nothing left for me here. No answers, no solace, no closure. My true inheritance lay within. And then, just like that, it finally happened. For the first time in my life, I saw the world through my father's eyes. I was once told that insanity runs in my family. first memory is that of hitting a piano key. My small, chubby finger, the cold, smooth ivory under my skin. And then, acceleration. Pure joy as I heard the immediate response to my action. The sound that appeared just because I pressed that key. I'm not gonna let it go. I won't be imprisoned. I need someone to confide in, and that someone is me. You mustn't give up. You had everything any of us ever wanted. You still do. Your talent, your marriage, your daughter. Neither of these went away. The only thing the flames changed was you. You have power over yourself. Live your life. Reclaim it. Don't let your body be your cage. Hush now, my baby. I'll tell you a tale. There was a man whose world wasn't pale. 
there was a woman who made the world sing. And they found love, the most beautiful thing. After some time, they had a child that brought light to their life, a lot of light. She loved her parents, her dolls, and her toys. And even Daddy wasn't mad at her noise. Then, one day, there was a fire. It took from Mommy all her desires. She didn't know what to do with her life. And then, she found a very sharp knife. how I looked. It's so dark in here. Time to let the light in.
I hate this. But it seems simpler than playing the violin. For now. Feels like sewing myself in place, though. Binding myself to my prison. Chains are of our own making. What would I do without you? This prison would be unbearable. Away. I can't look at it. And don't try to bind me again. What are you doing? I don't want it. Take it away. Take it away. I need to break free. If the finger you put it on has been deformed, destroyed, does the marriage even stand a chance? Luckily, I can take refuge in music. That's when my shackles get lighter, if only for a little while. Even the gramophone helps sometimes. I feel much better after listening to some vinyls. Also seems to think it helps. We thought everything we wanted to hide would fit here. How stupid we were. Today, a lock jammed in the bedroom door. I started screaming, begging anyone to open. It was a good half hour before a maid showed up. I don't understand. I lock the door in the house all the time. But something about being in a room I couldn't leave was just unbearable.
Even my instruments have their prisons. Do you want to stay with me, little bird? It's safe here. Suffocating, but safe. Maybe you want to fly away into the unknown and learn how to breathe again. Would it be better outside? I know it now. I'm measured. My room is shrinking every day. He paints it at night, and every morning the walls are this much closer. My prison grows smaller every day. I feel like my life is falling apart. Everything I touch breaks. Painting is so bland that you have to focus to see that it's even there. Looks like the work of a person afraid to change his surroundings. Someone who's resigned and isn't willing to put himself out there. Who hates to see even his loved ones out and about and free. A man who will imprison his family just to stop them from getting better than him. Let me out! Whatever you say about this place, it had great acoustics. I could move souls. I could do anything I wanted with them. If I had them listening. This here, it was my place of power. Today after dinner, I tried to pick up the violin, and I just couldn't grasp the bow. The problem wasn't even holding it properly. It was holding it at all and not letting go, not screaming with pain. It's like my hands are in shackles, like every finger has its own ball and chain. I can't move them properly. A painting as boring as this one could be conceived only by a person who doesn't feel or understand emotion anymore. A vile, heartless man, locked in a bland, boring prison.
want it to stop. It will. We'll look for help. Everything will be all right. No, I, I don't want more strangers to see me like this. But I can't do this alone. I'm not a doctor. There's my work, there's our daughter. There's too much for one person. Please, darling. We need help. But the medicine helps. It isn't that bad. My body will heal. I will heal. I, I just... I need to be with my loved ones. With you. Not with the doctors. We can't let that accident take our life from us. Try to think of better times, of our engagement, of the exhibition we did together, his paintings on the walls, my music in the air, freedom. I'm so glad you're all doing well. Are you sure, though, that you should be planning a journey abroad already? Traveling can be exhausting, even in the best circumstances. Give yourself time to heal, please. I started practicing again. It isn't much, and is frustrating, but it feels good. He keeps telling me that I should be careful. I don't think he believes I can get better. I think he likes it that I'm locked here, in this house, in my body, with him having all the control. I'm trapped in this house, in its body, in my head. This is where we pretended to be normal, sane, stable people. Where the shackles were the heaviest. library is so much more than just a room. It's an escape. Hundreds of escape exits. There's a child who needs you. I understand this is hard. I, I understand that you're in pain. But you are a mother, for God's sake. is a grown man. A grown man who swore to love you, honor you, comfort you, and keep you in sickness and in health. You know the damage the flames do better than anyone. Don't set yourself on fire to keep him warm.
practice makes perfect. When I had Sebastian, I thought I would be the best mother to ever walk the earth, and it almost killed me. With Margaret, I give myself more space to breathe, to be myself. I am happier for that, and the children seem to be happier too. There's almost nothing left of her now, but the sadness, the sadness remains. Do you remember the saying that behind every great man stands a great woman? Your husband has the bearing of a great man. But without your help, without someone who's always there for him, who keeps the home fires, he will wither and die. You proved yourself to be a strong woman. I know you have it in you to be there for him, even now. The tragedy that hurt you, hurt him too. I know you have compassion in your heart. Reach for it. No escape. I feel like it's the house that is moving around me. Not me moving around the house. My head is spinning. Oh. The sunlight of power. 
It shouldn't be so prominent in a three or maybe two-year-old, but I remember it clearly. The realization that the piano would do what I wanted it to. The feeling of complete control. From that day, I strived for it. And I... I have to. I have to get it back. I, I have to learn to write again. I need to learn myself again. Dearest, you were just a child, but in ten years' time, you'll be a woman. It's a hard part to play. I want to tell you the lessons I learned when my life fell apart. When you become a mother, give yourself space to breathe, to be yourself. You'll be happier, and your children will be too. There is no such thing as a perfect mother. The only rule is to love your child. In marriage, remember, he is your husband, not your child. A grown man who swore to love you, honor you, and keep you in sickness and in health. Care for him deeply, but don't forget about yourself. If you pursue art, use it to discover the deepest truth of your own soul. Then, everything else, fame, money, won't even matter. Once you learn how to uncover your own soul with your art, when you feel that surge of power, that's when you'll know that you're an artist. I pray that you don't have to learn these lessons the hard way. I love you, always. Like I'm always bound! All I wanted was for her to be happy and free. for me. There's always a way to connect with the things we love. And this way is acceptance. Not so fast. There was one reason for her to be strong. Her little daughter. 
but it was all wrong. <laughs> Wait for mommy. Come on, sweetie. You know mommy can't go down there with you. She likes to dance, my free bird. Blissfully ignorant of the prison this world is. I wish I could play something for her. I need to play something for her. When in darkness, try to remember that you have a daughter. You brought her into this world, and she needs you. Be strong for her, if not for yourself. They tried to play, but it was insane. To caress a child with hands bound with chain. She doesn't even know what to do with the dolls. She mostly tries to make them go to us when we call her. I think sometimes she ties them and locks them up. She named it Mr. Quiet. Mr. Quiet is her favorite toy. He never screams, she told me. He never makes a sound. Things are going better now. Truly is a miracle child. Quiet, well-behaved. Does everything I ask her to do. Little obedient prisoner of this place. Just like me. You made a vow after all. To be together in health and sickness. Your husband also needs a refuge. Someone to rely on. Please keep going. I need to do more. If they see me playing a sonata, they, they won't lock me up.
What happened to them is, of course, tragic. But it was also something that happened to you. As your relationship changes, your art will change with it. You should take extra care of yourself in this difficult period. As far as beauty goes, this painting is the antithesis of it. A slap in the face of aesthetic. Does the man who painted it even understand what beauty is? Or did whining about the ugliness of his surroundings strip him of the ability to perceive and create art? In the prison of his own mind, beauty ceased to exist. What is left of it now? Of our love, so pure, so ideal. When all I am is blood and pus. A pile of screaming flesh locked in a prison that is this house. No wonder you run towards your canvas. No wonder you love your art more than me. Everything in my life is tainted now, soaked in ever-moving shadows the flames cast on me. They surround the cell I'm locked in, and there seems to be no escape. Yesterday, I played with our daughter for a while. She was a bit shy at first, but then she loosened a bit. Started to laugh and dance. I felt the happiness coming. It, it was just at the door. And then, like a guard in a prison, feeling that I might just catch a glimpse of freedom, the pain came. I saw the fear in her eyes. In her mind, I must be a maimed monster, haunting her worst nightmares. I hope she picks up music again. It would be such a loss for the world if she didn't. I pray she still has it in her. I'm sure that when she gets better, both your art and hers will reach new heights. It's just a matter of time and of her wanting to heal. <laughs> the rotten heart of our house. There was a time when I couldn't spend a day without crying. But now, I don't even want to do that. It's like my emotions are locked in their own cage, and I can't even be bothered to look for the key. Playing with our daughter is usually a joyous occasion, 
one of few left in my life. Today, though, I had to ask her to leave almost mid-sentence. It's all these questions. How do you feel, Mommy? What do you think, Mommy? Mommy, why are you sad? What is your name, Mommy? I don't know, darling. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know anything but the fact that my chains grow heavier every day. I feel that my soul has gone sick, and that's why I'm writing to you. It's like all my energy has gone away. It is hard to even get out of bed. Not because of the pain. I don't mind the pain as much as I used to. I just can't see the point of getting up, eating, talking to anyone, living this life in the prison my body has become. The symptoms you're describing aren't uncommon, especially among women and artists. Being that you are both, uh, you are naturally more prone to hysteria and melancholy. I'd suggest avoiding extreme emotions and spending time in, in peaceful surroundings. In fact, we have a center for troubled women here and just over the sea. We had another argument today. Asked if I was feeling all right, and I just snapped. I don't understand why I'm being treated that way. The, the accident was ages ago. And I left largely unscathed. I'm fine now. It's like he wants me to be locked in this house forever. He was hurt. I could see that. And as ashamed as I am to admit it, it brought me a bit of satisfaction. What have I become? I wrote to the doctor, declining his offer. I won't be locked up. I, I won't let them. I will get through this on my own. This is my head. Where? 
Pathetic. You weakling. You claim that you're perfect? Nothing would hurt you if it were the truth. Perfection is incorruptible, eternal, proud. Look at you, chasing me around like a fool. What even am I to you? My true self. I am perfect. Nothing can hurt me. This is just a test, and I'm passing it. Everything is fine. Why did you lie to me? We prepared for your visit, you know. John and Mary were delighted to see their aunt and uncle again. And you can't imagine their, and mine, disappointment when you never came. Your husband tells me you're in no fit state to travel and that he told you as much. That he never agreed in the first place. Please. Don't write to me until you're ready to face the truth about your condition. My husband's palace. When he locked himself in there, the whole house felt like a prison cell. I'm sorry for the late answer. These letters are hard to read for me. I don't sleep because I'm thinking about you and your misfortunes. I need a break after each letter. And when I come back to it to write the answer, there's always a matter of deciphering. Your handwriting. I'm sure you know it's not as beautiful as it used to. Yesterday I was woken up by, I think, the most terrible sound I've ever heard. Like a sick cat being slowly strangled. It took me a long time to realize it was the violin. She picked it up and tried to play. I think there's no coming back for her. From what you write, this whole situation is very hard for your child. Maybe you should spend less time with her. 
I know it's painful, but I believe it will be for the best. You both need time. Sometimes I think she changed too much. That this is not the person I loved. That this is not a person I could ever love. I don't think you fully understand your condition. You have been in a terrible accident and you are, to be honest, lucky to be alive, not to mention writing letters, demanding of your body to come back to normal. To be healthy is like demanding a broken mirror to fix itself. Uh, you're doing great progress and you're healing, but I'm afraid things won't be back to normal. No doctor on earth can make the pain go away. I'm truly sorry to tell you that. But you will have to learn to live with it. I hope you'll understand one day. All my life, I was told to strive for perfection. And I didn't strive. I achieved it. I was the most talented musician, the most inspiring muse, the most caring mother, the perfect wife. I never accepted my own weakness as an excuse. And then it caught up to me. Now there is no coming back, the life we had. There's no use. How could they understand it if I don't? I think I just need something that will work. I need this to end. There is no coming back to the perfection I once had. No coming back to chaining myself into the roles people want me to play. No coming back to crushing my soul under others' expectations that I think are my own. There will be no coming back here. I'm ugly. I'm disabled. I'm useless. I'm free. 